I'm like, good. Video is now recording. So I'm going to do my quick intro. And we're going to dive straight into this. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> I've had a bad throat lately. So I've sort of, oh, I've been coughing a lot. Here we go. Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome to this week's episode of the Podiatry Legends Podcast. The podcast is on to help you feel, see, and think differently about the podiatry profession. Now, with me today is Dr. Ebony Vincent. Now, she works in California, Orange County Podiatry, and she is also the co-star of the hit TLC TV series, My Feet Are Killing Me. So, Dr. Ebony, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing really good. I just got off of work, so... I'm ready to start my afternoon. I know. Good to be here. Was, <laughs> we, we jumped on about 15 minutes ago and you came on and you went, oh, I didn't want to hold you up, but I've just got one last patient. Is he okay if I go? <laughs> and what am I going to say? Am I going to go, no, I'm sorry. Sorry, I mean, but I am right. so more important. You tell that I just didn't want, think, want you to think I stood you up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's funny because we were scheduled like a week to, ago to do this. And it wasn't that you stood me up, but. This, this is, I think this is really important about when you have systems or things that you do, there's a so, certain process you go through it. And the reason you develop systems is so things don't stuff up. Exactly. And my phone literally is my like guideline of my day. So if I'm not receiving those alerts, I'm just like, I think I'm good. I did all my things today. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. We, we break the system. So normally the system I have, I'll ask them, well, would you like to be a guest on the show? They say, yes, that'd be great. I will send them a, a, a booking link. They go into my diary and they pick a time. Because they do it that way, then my booking calendar will it's just, send you, send you remind, constantly send you reminders to the point. Right. No, and I appreciate that. Like this yeah. time around, I was like, I got this. I'm, I'm on it. <laughs> I think it reminds you enough times you can't forget. And <laughs> when we organized the last one, we sort of broke protocol a little bit. And I, and I said, oh, what day would you? You said, oh, this day would be greater. And I said, okay, so I'll just book it in my diary because I had it in front of me. <laughs> Never, so, you know, we got one reminder. No. And about half I know. beforehand, I'm going, yeah, I, don't, I, I know what I'm like if I don't get reminders of things. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't even know where the link is at, at this point. I don't know. And when you text there, I, I think you emailed me and I was like, oh my gosh, I feel so bad. Yeah, I did. So, so bad. Are you mad? I, said, <laughs> I hope you feel really bad, but you missed out. <laughs> no, I actually apologize. I missed I, out on this. I apologize to you saying, this is what happens when your systems are there for a reason. This is what happens when I break my own system, thinking, ah, we'll, just, we'll just shortcut it. And, uh, and we I'm usually it. really good at remembering every little thing, though, too. So I, I felt like something was missing that day. And I was like, I think I'm done. Maybe. <laughs> no, I, I have done it many a times myself. So let's get into the Dr. Ebony story. What, okay. got you into, what got you into podiatry in the first place? I'm always interested. Yeah. So, I mean, I was a student athlete growing up. I played volleyball and I played volleyball in college. So, you know, I yeah, really how, wanted to How tall to are you, be... by the way? How tall are you then? What? How tall I'm are you? I'm 5'10". Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I'm kind of on the shorter end for volleyball, but um, I could jump really, really high. I'm like super athletic. So it worked out for me that yeah. way. Um, so I really did want to do um, orthopedics or some type of sports medicine. I was always like wanting to be still around in that sports realm. Um, I even thought at some point, like, you know, maybe I'll do still something in sports. Like I coached volleyball for a couple of years after I stopped playing. Yeah. Like I love, I love just, you know, being in, in athletics. Um, but, you know, I found the field of podiatry when I was actually going through my master's program because um, I had to take a post back and the post back turned into a master's uh, program because I had I got another like academic scholarship for the master's. Um, but what was pretty cool was that I was, I had the time to shadow, you know, and um, I was shadowing a whole lot of doctors. I shadowed um, ortho, I shadowed a pathologist, I shadowed OBGYN. And to be honest with you, I was kind of like weeding out the specialties that I wanted to do. And I was yeah. getting a little bit dejected, like, man, I really thought I wanted to do this, but it turns out I hate it. Like, <laughs> it turns out <laughs> I don't like any out. of this, you know? Um, and so my aunt was like, you know, you should look into the field of podiatry. She was like, she worked in the um, emergency room. Um, she's an ER physician. And she was like, you know, every time I have to call podiatry down to the emergency room, they're just so nice. And they're so happy. And 
they really look like they love their lives, you know? <laughs> and she was like, you, you can't say that about a lot of other doctors who's calling down to the ER. It's like all grumpy and disgruntled. And so I was like, well, I never really thought about, you know, just focusing on the feet. Like it's not something that I ever thought about, but I went um, to New York. I was living in Philadelphia at the time, but I went to New York for a, um, an informational meeting at NYCPM. It was like the whole like, couple of days worth of a informational meeting. So you're originally, and, you're originally from the East Coast? No. So my story, I'm a little bit back and forth. So yeah. I'm originally from California. My volleyball scholarship got me to Hampton, Virginia. Okay. And then after Virginia, I went to Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine uh, for my master's program. And this is where all this happened. Uh -huh. So still okay. like in the Northeast, yeah. right? Um, so, you know, after that, that weekend, I was like, okay, well, I'm interested. So I need to pretty much shadow someone to figure out if that's that's what I want to do. And um, I shadowed a wonderful doctor, Dr. Mangel. And um, he had an office in Camden, New Jersey at the time. And it was just like right across the, the bridge. And he was doing some really cool stuff. He's like faculty at Temple. Like he was like such a really nice guy, family man. Like, and he just seemed really happy with his job. And I loved it. Like I shadowed him for about a month or two. And um, I applied. I was like, I think that this is like, I'm literally not like, emotionally exhausted after work I'm actually happy to like you know <laughs> come and shadow you today yeah. um so it made it made the, all the difference in the world for me in terms of like what I wanted to do with my profession so that's how I picked podiatry <laughs> okay so as soon as you started did you have any reservations that well I'm not sure if this is what I wanted to do or as soon as you started you went I'm I'm so glad that I found this profession um, I was more so I'm so glad I found, found the profession. I mean, obviously there were things that were a little bit shocking to me, like obviously the the wound care and the, the diabetic <laughs> situation, like the venostasis wounds and stuff. You, you don't ever really prepare for that when you don't know what you're embarking upon. But I think that the other stuff that I saw, like, you know, fixing bunions and fractures and breaking mets and you know, all of those things that I was exposed to, I was like, I, w I didn't realize that there was such a variety to this field. And then adding on another layer of that, I didn't realize how much entrepreneurship could be involved with podiatry as well. And, I, you know, I've never considered myself a one dimensional type of person. I've always been very busy, high energy. So I didn't want to be swallowed in the fields of just being a science person. Like I wanted to exercise that left brain too. And, um, I really did think that that was my opportunity to do that in the field of podiatry. So um, I was able to kind of see that a little bit. Yeah, I think there's certain aspects of podiatry. I think if everyone knew every aspect of it, some people may not have done it. Like when we went through and we were first learning to do uh, injections, you know, just uh, mm -hmm. uh, digital blocks, I didn't realize we had to practice on each other. Yeah. <laughs> if I had have known that. There's a high possibility. See, when I got involved, a friend of mine said, hey, you should do podiatry. You'd be really good at it. They have these things called orthotics. And because you have an art background and you see things in 3D, I think you would make really good orthotics. That's what got me into podiatry was making orthotics, sports, yeah, yeah. sports medicine, biomechanics, and go, oh, this is really good. Now, when all of a sudden they said, now we're going to practice doing injections. And I went, oh, yeah, where's the oranges? <laughs> no, 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 you're doing it on each other. I said, you're shitting me, aren't you? No way. And yeah. if I had a known that, that. <laughs> I got conned. If I had a known that, I don't think I would have done it. I think I would have been too scared. Really? Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel you on that. Like I, I tell people who ask, like, how did you figure out your feel? I was like, there's, it's a, it's, at the end of the day, like you want to be passionate about, you know, what you do, but for myself, I'm more passionate about the people that I'm serving, you know, yeah. like, I feel like whatever, in whatever capacity I can help, I will help. And if it's in, if it's in a particular skill set, then that, that still is fulfilling to me. Um, the gross part or the parts that particularly don't uh, excite me, I'm willing to like muscle through it because the end result is still the same. I'm still helping, you know? Yeah. So um you know, and I've never had a, a, a squeamish stomach. I've always been kind of like, oh, that's that's weird, but okay, you know. <laughs> yeah, blood and guts have never bothered me, but it's never bothered me. <laughs> but a good a good open ulcer that's dripping just no, nah, yeah. my, my stomach just 
just loses it. <sighs> oh, wait, but going back to the injections part, even though it would have scared me to do it, now that we, you know, when I went through it, the thing I appreciated about it is when you went to do it on a patient and then went, is this going to hurt? And you go, well, believe it or not, I've had this done so many times to me. Uh, probably only one out of 10 times did it really hurt. And it was because the person mm-hmm. doing it was shaking like this, their hands were going all <laughs> over the place and my foot was doing the same thing. I said, you're lucky you're getting it done by someone who is highly skillful and I'll get you right. this. With not experience. Hurt. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the difference. But I do believe a lot of people that do podiatry, it's regardless of what part of podiatry you're doing, the end result when you help a patient come out the other end with a really positive result, there's not much better feeling. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's great. It is great. Because I feel like we take a lot of patients who um, other doctors may just not even look at their foot or maybe yeah. they look at them and they just like, yeah, no, I can't, or <laughs> I'm not willing to take it on. I feel like podiatry gets a lot of those kinds of patients and we actually do some really amazing, amazing work, you know? So um, I, I do appreciate that about the field. You can definitely see some transformations and really change a person's life for sure. So having your sport background is being involved with sports patients, is that still a priority? And do you still have much to do with um, volleyball? So, uh, no, unfortunately I have not picked up a volleyball in years. <laughs> I always thought I would probably go at, like to play beach volleyball and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, haven't yet, but maybe, maybe, I don't know. Um, honestly, I got a little bit burnt out after playing for, since I was like 13 years old, um, playing competitively. Uh, I, I don't see myself playing in a not competitive environment. So I, you know, I do other sporty things instead, but I love the sport still. I still watch it. Um, so um, hopefully I'll get back into playing a little bit here and there. Um, but as far as my practice goes, I see a, a little bit, a lot of variety. I mean, sports is still a lot of a uh, part of my practice. I see a yeah. lot of the um, college athletes and stuff like that for soccer or, you know, uh, basketball. Sometimes we see some of the um, players from like the Chargers teams and stuff out here. Um, so yeah, it's still sports medicine is still part of my practice, but I think since the show in particular, <laughs> I'm getting a lot of, <laughs> of nuanced, strange, really, um, unique kind of cases. Um, so that's, that's been new, but well, you, been you brought up, you brought up the show. So <laughs> let's move, let's move yeah. on to the show then. How did you get chosen for the show? Yeah. Out of all the podiatrists in America, what did you, where were you, what were you doing to all of a sudden be chosen you know, one of the faces of the show? I think it was such, it's such a faith thing. It's just kind of like when preparation meets opportunity, because I literally was not vying for any of this. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of bizarre. Um, when I graduated from residency, I knew I wanted to, to be an independent contractor, private practice type of person. Because like I said before, like I never wanted to be one dimensional, one dimensional. I always wanted to have something else like entrepreneurial behind me, Um, whether it be like a product or maybe a podcast like yourself, something, something else besides, you know, the science of podiatry and and medicine. Um, And with, with that being said, I did start to um, grow my social media during residency I had no idea where it would lead. It was just something like, well, if I want to be like somebody, you know, I have to have something to just say. And right now, yeah. And right when, now. When I you say to- social media, was that Instagram, Facebook? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Instagram I, and Facebook. You weren't, you weren't TikToking and stuff, were you? Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't TikToking. I was I was yeah. Facebooking and Instagramming. And my thought process was, you know, if you're gonna be someone worth listening to, you might want to start telling your story now. And the story that I could tell now was in residency. And residency was hard and long, and you know, I was alone a lot, just studying and you know, rounding and stuff by myself. And so I guess social media be, kind of became my outlet. And, you know, so I would just document stuff that I learned, certain, certain tips that I got through the day, like certain things that I would do for relaxation during residency. And I really did start to build uh, quite a following. Yeah. And with that, 
you know, came the questions. It was like people saying, hey, you know, I, I have a foot issue. Like, can you t give me advice on this? And I would never give like, you know, advice on through social media, but I would then speak about, have a post about the subject. And so that started to get more and more traction. And so when I started my private practice out here, um, as an independent contractor, I kind of continued that. I continued to do the social media, the Facebook, the Instagram, and um, in doing so, promoting my practice. Like, hey, if you need any help, like this is where my location is, and this is what I do. Um, so my practice grew pretty quickly. So Orange just... County Podiatry is your practice? No, no, no. So I'm an independent contractor for OC Podiatry. Okay. Uh, yeah. So they basically gave me the brick and mortar and was like, uh, here's your building and here's your tools. Let's see if you can grow this place, you yeah. know? And um, it grew pretty quickly. Like I did pretty well um, when I first started out and the social media kind of kept going and I had a lot of word of mouth and all that good stuff. And it was the office manager had um, was telling me that she had kept getting these emails. And the emails are saying, hey, we're a production team in L.A. And we think, you know, Dr. Vincent would be really great for this show that we're about to produce. And, you know, with all things social media, I was getting getting traction. But you always get a lot of crazy things like, oh, do you have a foot fetish or, uh, you know, kind of weird messages. Right. right so right. Yeah. that was going to be my yeah, last like, question, actually, but kind no, of weird. We'll, 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 we'll go down that path later. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, I was just like, no, this can't be real. Like this is spam. Just delete it. Right. Yeah. So we deleted those emails a, a good three times before she was like, you know, they keep saying that this is legit. So you should probably like look them up, reach back out and see what happens. And when I looked them up, it was pretty legit. Like the, the producer who, you know, made that show, um, Naked and Afraid. Yeah, kind of a bizarre show. Also, so when you when you realize right at that point, mm -hmm. yeah, if you can go back to that exact moment when you went, "Oh shit, this is real," what went through your mind, or how did you feel right at that moment when you're thinking, "My God, this is actually real." Yeah, I mean, it was kind of it was kind of still surreal because I'll tell you how it happened. Like, I emailed them back. I was like, "Yeah, sure, we can do a Skype meeting," you know, because I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> we could do a Skype meeting. And so when they got on the phone, it was um, the producer of the, the show, like Naked and Afraid and like his team, like there was a panel of people there and they were like super excited that I was on. I was thinking it was going to be sort of just like one-on-one -on -one kind of thing. Um, but they were like, we've been following you. We really like your content. We think you're excellent. We're so excited to meet you. And they were like really geeked up. And I was like, oh, I'm feeling pretty special about this. <laughs> Like, what is going on? Well, there's nothing better than somebody else is blowing your trumpet and you're not having yeah, it yourself. Yeah, was, they, yeah. Were, they were building me up. So yeah. um, anyway, it did, it did feel kind of surreal, kind of kind of good. But then I was just like, this is probably too good to be true. It's probably not going to happen. But because they did they did tell me, they said they, they've interviewed hundreds of podiatrists. They're like, we've been interviewing everyone across the country. We've done da 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 And um, we're super excited to meet you. I was like, okay, great. So what is this about? And they're like, we want to make a show like all about feet. We want to, you know, kind of create this environment where we're seeing all the horrible, the bad, the shocking, but we want to frame it beautifully. And we think that, you know, the way that you are, your content is would frame it exactly how we envision. Yeah. So um, long story short, um, they, they came out and they filmed like a pilot episode. They're just like down the street from, from Orange County in LA. So um, they came down for about a week. And I had booked some surgeries that week and they followed me around for those. And then, you know, they followed me around for some office visits and that was it. And they were like, great, thanks. We got, we got what we need. So we're going to go film some other people and we'll get back to you. <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't a guarantee that you're in. You sort of, it was almost like a tradition. Yeah, it was. And uh, to be honest with you, I didn't realize that it was an audition until after it was over. I was like, oh, <laughs> that was so Even when weird. you threw that part by then, you wouldn't have known that they were doing the same thing with Brad on the other side of the country. Like they'll, had, I had no idea. They're putting the band they, together. They're like putting creating yeah. monkeys. They were creating the band. Seriously, yeah. it was it was ridiculous because after I filmed, um, the producer goes, "Well, we're we're headed back east. We're going to film a couple people back there, and then we're going to shop this thing. We're going to shop which network is going to um, going to play it on on their network so we can start 
you know, filming episodes. Um, and I, I mean, that was a learning part on my end because I was thinking like, okay, so where is this going? And they had no idea that it was going to be on TLC. Like it could have been on A&E, could have been on PBS. It could have been uh, okay. on ABC. We don't know. But the thing is the, the network has to cater to whatever audience they have. And so whatever network picked it up has an input on which type of doctors or which doctors or doctor would uh, relate well with their audience. And so that just happened okay. to me, Brad and I. So that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So the, basically the, the network looked at all the different podiatrists and how they gelled and how they dealt with patients and how they communicated. Mm-hmm. And they said, you two are great. So you and Brad, before the show becoming real like as a, a series, you know, like the first season, had you actually met, mm-hmm. did they get you guys to meet each other beforehand or no? No. So we found out, I think, I want to say like we found out in December that it was going to be he and I that were the the doctors in the show. And we connected via Instagram. He sent me a direct message and was like, I hear that we're both going to be on this show. Yeah. This is crazy. <laughs> like we need to exchange numbers to talk about it, you know? So, <laughs> and I bet there would so have been we, a lot of excitement on that first call when you first it, actually it was. with each other. I, we were both kind of like, is this real? Is this really happening? Like, and then there were, we, we were as excited as we were. We were still both like, so this means we're going to be like showcasing podiatry. Like it's you and I, and we kind of had that, that fear of, maybe the field will reject it. Maybe they're going to mm. just not like it, you know, like a bit of pressure. Hopefully we, yeah, no pressure. <laughs> What's helpful talking to you about this is because Brad has been on the podcast previously, episode 68, mm-hmm. developing your personal brand. That's what we spoke about. Mm-hmm. It'd be good. Cause I've, I've spoken to him about certain areas of it, but not how the two of you actually gel together. So it's how we met. Good. Right. Yeah. It's good getting this side of things. Yeah, no, it was, it was pretty great because I felt like Brad and I have very um, similar personalities and approaches to things. Um, I was super happy. That he was super down to earth, not oh, an arrogant bone in his handsome, body. Handsome like, bastard. Handsome guy. Oh. Handsome guy, not a, just the nicest person you'll ever meet yeah. and just so relatable and down to earth. You know, I did, we were both very um, humbled by the, by the opportunity and wanted to make a good impression. And so we were very much so together um in in the creation of the first six to nine episodes you know we would call each other all the time like hey what are you doing for this because I want to be sure that we're not doing this and not presenting it like that you know so we would we would always call each other just to make sure that we were both on the same page with things um and so yeah we developed a fast friendship but we we didn't meet until that October right before the show aired in January so we, they had a photo shoot together or something like along. Yeah. Way. Yeah. We had a, we, I flew to New York and he met, he, we had this like whole very Hollywood <laughs> photo shoot together. Yeah. And that was the first time we met in person. Because so originally when I first saw the show promoted, I just assumed like some of the other programs, we can see those plastic surgeon guys where it's mm. two of them together in a practice. So I assumed with the two of you together, no. you're in the practice, but it wasn't, until straight away you realize one's on the West Coast, one's on the East Coast. Yeah. And it's completely different. So did you have much input in, while they were doing doing different shots, we, did you have much input on the final cut? Like, did they get you? No. Like, no? <laughs> okay, that answered no. that question. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> um, so there's there's the science side, right? Like we, t- we can talk about the science all day long and it makes sense to other doctors or other podiatrists. Yeah. And then there's the production side of it where they're like, uh, we are trying to reach millions of people and nobody's going to understand what you just said, you know? So there was a time where I would, I would have to be like, okay, we well, can't really smush this part with this smart, this, with this part. Cause it doesn't make sense. Like scientifically it's, it's literally wrong. So you can't yeah. say that, you know? Um, but it makes sense to the lay people if they don't know anything <laughs> so there was there was a couple of t- scenes where i was just like i just don't think that that's that's good but it was already out there you know but it's also who's but, the market it's if another podiatrist yeah. is watching the show and all of a sudden they're starting they're getting on the phone and they're putting in complaints oh well that does not exactly right the way that they went from here to here right but it's no different to when you're communicating to a patient you could you can 
sit with them and you can show them how intelligent you are using all these really big words and, and making them go, wow, you're really, really smart, but I have no idea what you're talking about. Or mm-hmm. you dumb it down and just put it in layman's terms and sometimes say things that aren't exactly right. Right. But for the patient, it makes sense to how that process could work, even if you had have skipped a few steps. So I think that makes sense. Right. So, yeah, I, so we wanted to make sure that the, the science matched up, but it translated well. Yeah. It, so it's a kind of a, a dance that we had to do. Um, but, you know, that comes with learning, like the production team and learning, like the, the people who are actually doing the editing. And now it's like so fluid, like they all text in a minute, like, is this the right term to use for that? Like, if we want to put this in writing, like, is this what you meant by that? Or do we, you know, need to reword it to make it make more sense? Like, do we need to, you know, bring it down a level to make it make sense? So they'll, they'll call and ask now as opposed to yeah. just like, well, this made sense to me. So I'm going to put it out there. Like- <laughs> <laughs> so how long does it take for each episode that is aired? How much filming is involved and, you know, like pre-production or preparation, filming, post-production them asking you questions for each episode that actually comes out um so for the pre and post um like actual physician part that i feel like i'm working all the time like after i end work you know i'm in the early mornings talking to patients on the east coast or late at night talking to patients on the west coast just making sure i have a good foundation of who they're bringing for filming yeah um and then on the post-op side of it definitely you know reaching out to them on a regular basis teleconferencing reaching out to their you know town doctors or whatever um just making sure they're going to heal and rehab correctly so that's kind of a 24 7 kind of thing um for the actual filming though it's not that bad like it's it's long. Don't get me wrong. It's very long hours, <laughs> but it's, it takes probably like two weeks every other month. So it doesn't, um, take up like a whole bunch of time. Like in that two week period, I'll probably put in like, I don't know, three, 12 hour days. Um, and then like half days, Yeah. you know, so I can still work, can still see my regular their office patients in between that but it is it, those two weeks you're you're working really hard yeah i should try to do like that because i know even yeah. when <laughs> we've done tv com- when we used to do tv commercials for my podiatry clinic and i was like spielberg i was just a nutcase and <laughs> the amount of time it used to take the amount it'd be a couple yeah say two to three hours that we would block out just to get it get the shots we wanted for a 30 second commercial and i used to sit mm-hmm. there going, no wonder it takes six months yeah. six months to make a movie. It takes forever. It takes for an hour. And a lot of this stuff we do doesn't really get on the actual show. Like sometimes yeah. it's online or sometimes I'll put it in a discovery and I never see any of it. And I'll be like, I know I said a whole bunch <laughs> <laughs> of extra stuff and I don't know where it is. Like, where is this footage? Like, <laughs> oh, so it hit, hit the, it hit the cutting room floor. It didn't make it. Yeah. And they were like, oh, we don't need it. You sit there and watch a show yourself or with with friends go, oh, wait, wait till this part comes up. This is going to be really good. And all of a sudden it's not in there and you go, what happened? Yeah. 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 And then that happens a few times where I'm like, they didn't even even cover half of what happened. (laughs) I threw in such a good one liner there and they chopped out my one liner. That was really funny. Mm -hmm. Most of the, most of the time though, like they have a great story. It's very well packaged and presented. Um, but certain things that I'm like, ooh, that's a good part to put in there. They, they never put it in. <laughs> but I suppose it, it really comes down to the, the experience of them putting a show together. They know what mm-hmm. works, what doesn't. And even, mm-hmm. and I'm sure if you threw in suggestions, they might go, oh, yeah, we see it from that point of view, but they're still not, still not going to use it. Yeah. This, this is the narrator. This is, this is the story we're telling about this patient. Mm-hmm. This is what's going to make people watch it. So with the show, the way the show's progressed, they've now brought on, a third doctor. Yeah. So, um, Dr. Brad and Dr. Sarah have known each other since residency. Okay. Um, so that's how they work on the East coast together. I haven't really found a partner out here yet. Oh, they're so they are they looking but, for, so, um, so Sarah Heller is with, yeah. Brad. so do they get together and discuss cases over on the East so coast? I'll, I'll be honest with you now, because you know, the show's kind of more fluid. Yeah. I don't really know the ins and outs of what they do on the West Coast. I am assuming 
that, you know, at one point, like Brad and Sarah would talk together. But now that Dr. Sarah has more of a role in the show, I think that she's getting her own patients. And I don't know. I'm not sure what the level well, of. Um, the photos turning up in the show tiles now. So it used to just be you and Brad there with the big. The what? Right? Or when they do the. Art Sorry, I'm at the hospital that helicopter's coming. Sorry. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, my helicopter's out the back. Up yeah. Um, <laughs> So, so anyone listening to this, if you're just a new podiatrist, yes, we all fly <laughs> helicopters around after a certain number of years. Yeah. Um, what I was saying is when they did the artwork for the show, it used to just be you and Brad. And then I noticed yeah. a new artwork coming through. I went, oh, they've, they've introduced another person. So I had to do a little bit of just stalking to find out who she was. Uh, <laughs> So eventually, if she ends up staying on the show, we'll get her on here at some stage as well. Yeah, for, I think she's here to stay. So yeah. you should probably reach out. <laughs> yeah, I'll reach out because we could get the whole gang on at some stage. Yeah. And then maybe when you get to like the 10th anniversary and if the podcast is still going, we'll get you all on at the same time. Oh, 10th anniversary. You're, you're rooting for 10 seasons, huh? Yeah, then Brad, Brad will be a lot more relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> I think that I hope it goes 10 seasons. That would be nice. Um, so we can showcase a little bit of everything. So, yeah. Well, I think the longer, the longer it goes on, the like when it first started, I didn't hear anyone talking about it too much. Mm -hmm. Other, yeah, a lot of podiatrists were and all that, but as the show has gone on and there must be more snippets that are turning up on social media, I've had friends who yeah, are not podiatrists who have come up to me and said, Oh, did you know that there was a podiatry show? <laughs> And I went, yeah, I did. And I went, they should do one in Australia. I'm going, there'd be too much. They, they keep saying that, you know, <laughs> we, should, we should take this on the road, you know? <laughs> well, it is. It's because a lot of shows do that. They'll have them in America. But I tell you right now, uh, yeah, in Australia, it'd be really interesting to see who they would get in Australia to do it. Yeah. It'd be really Why? Funny. Why do you say that? <laughs> oh, it'd just be really funny. It'd just be really, because we all know each other. Like a oh, lot of okay. we all, we all tend to to know each other, so it'd be really interesting. Um, even though, like, from one coast to the other side of the coast, it's yeah, like right. same size as America, but a lot of people in podiatry all know each other or know know of each other. So it would be, uh, I'd love to see it. Love to see it in Australia. I'd love yeah, to see who they pick. I think it, I think it would be cool because different pathologies can pop up in different countries. Like even on as far as East Coast, West Coast in the United States, like you know, it's very different pathologies sometimes or um, different different things that pop up um, in terms of pathology. So that would be interesting to see how it is in different countries. Yeah, and I sure. think it would also like with you and Brad too. Your personalities would have had a lot to do with it as well. So even talking to you now, this is the first time we've met. Uh, and the conversation has been so easy. And I think yeah. that's probably what you're like with your patients as well, which is what comes across on the camera. The, there is yeah. no, there's no walls that, that are up. So I think that would have been a huge part of it as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think that that's kind of what, what makes the show unique. It's not like, oh, you know, what's your problem? What's your foot? Here's the surgery. You yeah. go away, you know, <laughs> it's more like, it's more like they're taking you on this like personal emotional journey. And I think that that's, that's special because I feel like that is something that's unique to podiatry, you know, like if someone's foot doesn't work, you literally can't work out. So you'll gain weight. So you'll be type two diabetic. So you'll have wounds and neuropathy and then limb loss, you know? So it's, it's very, it's a progressive, it can progress positively or negatively and like we're yeah. here for that journey and i think that that's what um what they showcase you know so with um with the show it's been going for a little while now have you been walking down the street and being recognized by anybody yet i have it's been very interesting <laughs> okay how was that the first time yeah. so so pitch your first time you're walking down the street and someone came up and said are you dr ebony from the yeah. dietary tv show and what was your reaction yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll tell you like the progression of how yeah. it happened. So when the first commercials came out, I was in a nail salon because this was, you know, back when the world was open, I was in the nail salon and my commercial pops up and I'm the only one really excited. I'm like, Oh my God, you guys look, look, it's me on TV. And literally <laughs> no one cared. They were looking at me like, ma'am no like that's not you you need to be quiet and sit down right <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought like, oh, okay well it's fine you know it's fine we'll see how the show goes right fast forward to like 
after this show premiered, um, then things started to kind of pick up, but then I was the one that was ignorant. Again, getting my nails done, you know? And this lady comes and she's like, don't I know you from somewhere? And I'm like, no, I don't think so. And she's like, no, I do. I know you from somewhere. And here I go trying to think about where I could know this lady from. I'm like, well, did you go to church? Do you go to, I mean, maybe I met you at a restaurant one day. Yeah. And she was like, no, I've seen you on TV. I was like, oh, right. I am on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like that whole thing happened. And then now it is kind of like uh, happening on more so on a regular basis. Like people will either recognize me and just shout, Hey, Dr. Ebony, we love your show. Or, um, I've had people someone will... selfies. Yeah, they do. Every patient now wants a selfie. <laughs> yeah, if I'm, if I'm with you, I'd, if I'm not, yeah. yeah, I'd ask for a selfie. Yeah. It, it's very nice. And it's, people are very respectful about it too. And, and some people are like, you know, you look just like that girl from the show. <laughs> I'm like, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny you like that because like where I live in Cairns, which is a small regional area in the tropics. And mm -hmm. I was probably the first podiatrist to advertise on TV. Yeah, probably oh, wow. in Australia. So, and we used to advertise all the time, constantly, constantly shooting new ads. And I was always in every ad. It'd be the same thing. We'd be at a barbecue. So I'd say, I oh, know you're from somewhere. I'd go, and we're going through the rugby league teams or rugby yeah. union that we're a player. <laughs> Did you play beach volleyball? No. And, we're and my wife is there just shaking her head going. Like, you're everywhere. Like <laughs> you go, you've seen this TV ads. And they went, oh, that's right. you're the TV podiatrist. And you're like, you go, yeah. And then eventually you started getting the hang of it. Right. It goes somewhere. It like, doesn't go, occur to you. And you're like, oh, that's right. Yeah, you're, on, you're on this TV commercial. You go, yeah, yeah, that's right. But it was good because it would spark conversations about mm -hmm. podiatry right no sometimes, I sometimes you didn't awesome. want to do you were doing something completely different and you're like I don't want to talk about podiatry right now but <laughs> it's all part of getting yourself out of there which um because I'm just looking at the time and I know you, that you're busy going way back when you said about building your social media profile mm -hmm. how how important do you think that was to where you are now in your career and uh, with the show so and like in turn it's twofold so for me when I first started my social media it was an outlet for me personally like I kind of used it as my outlet as my online journal if you will yeah um and, and it kind of made me be more true to myself in an authentic way but still public you know and I think that that is what um got the traction and so that's what I kind of continue to do like continue to you know maintain my authenticity to maintain my honesty to continue to share you know the day-to-day -day happenings or my day-to-day -day thoughts and feelings about about things but as they pertain to podiatry in a business way now um so I think it helps still with you know I guess my personality, <laughs> but it also translates well in my, in my management of the office and the creation of the show. So I think social media can be a really good tool and also probably a really bad one, depending on what you're using it for. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> well, I've actually said that to people, there's been, uh, because I do a lot of marketing workshops and sometimes we'll talk about say Instagram. Or just yeah, Facebook in general, and and I've I've been when we were doing them live. If there were a group of people there, so put your hand up if you follow your dentist on Instagram, and no hands go up. Put your hand up if you follow your chiropractor. No hands go. Up. Oh, what about your physio? No hand. What about your doctor? Now, what about anyone here got a proctologist? Do you like to follow them yeah. on Instagram? And they go, no one puts a hand. We go, well, why do your patients want to follow you? What is it you're doing that is going to yeah. like spark the interest? Be just that little bit, whether it's a bit being a bit different so, or it's just showing a little bit about yourself. Right. Ooh, I think I need to turn my plug up my phone. Um, I mean, battery, low battery. Yeah. No, um, okay. I can yeah. <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> so I think the, the answer to that question is I try not to inundate people who follow me with pictures of things that are probably not as pleasing, especially on Instagram. Yeah. Instagram was created for pretty photos, right? Like that's kind of like the, the premise of why it was created. 
And so what I started doing was putting a pretty photo with uh, something educational to say. And so I started my page with kind of a lifestyle, kind of a just picturesque kind of thing. And that has, I feel, draws people to follow my life, follow what I'm, if I'm exercising, here it is. If this is what I made for dinner. Here's me and my brother, you know? No, I <laughs> like, like that. Uh, that. I really like that. Yeah, like you see that your doctor is a real person. And so they do real person things. And so they understand why if you're in pain that you need help. So you can go out in the world and do other things, you know? Yeah. Every once in a while, I do post educational things about the feet, just so you know that I am out here doing work, you know? But at the same <laughs> not time, all fun games. You know, yeah, it's not, not all fun and games. But um, at the same time, now with the show, I, I tend to not post much at all about or much pictures about the feet because you can just go to watch it on TLC, you know, <laughs> you can yeah. just watch it there. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I tend to shy away from posting things that are like super medical. Um, so I, I tend to just focus on, Hey, I'm a real person and I do podiatry things and I do my best to get you back on your feet. So if you'd like me to see what I can do for you, come on down, you know? Yeah. I think it's really, really good advice because I know a lot of podiatrists that might be have a real big interest say, in scuba diving, or it could be drinking yeah. wine. It might be whiskey. It could be rum. It could be hamburgers. That's what I like. Right. And I'm saying bring that into whatever it is you're sharing with people. Mm -hmm. so, so they get to see you as a person. And <clears throat> I don't know. Do you know uh, these guys, the podiatry journey? journey? Dick oh, Shatt, yeah, you know? I do. These guys? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, love, I like them. I they're, love, so they're great. Yeah, I, I love, love what they do. And and that's when you were talking about what you were doing even as a student and just building your profile, I think more of what like what they're doing, uh, there's a girl in the UK called Ecta who's doing the same thing. Just She's sharing stuff about podiatry, but also sharing a little bit about her crazy self as well. Right. And they're building their brand up before they ever become qualified, which I know not everybody – not everybody can, probably can do it or wants to do it, but I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is it's kind of a, a, for me, it wasn't a lot of work because like I said, it yeah. was my outlet. I enjoyed doing it, you know? Um, That's a key enjoyment. There's got to be enjoyment. Yeah, It's not a job. You're doing it because you enjoy doing it. Right. I, I enjoy reaching out to people and I feel like it makes me have a better relationship with my patients. Like the amount of patients who have followed me on social media or follow me on my Peloton. Now that I have one, I got a Peloton this year and um, people are like, now that my foot's fixed, I'm going to follow you and do some stuff on Peloton, you know? So it's kind of like, Peloton? Cool. it's a bike. It's an indoor oh. bicycle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay i wasn't sure okay well that makes sense yeah okay yeah and you bit. can virtually like do classes and stuff together so i'm like my a lot of my patients follow me on that now and they'll, they'll come in like hey i saw what you did this week and how was it how, like that was fun like you know we'll have something to talk about yeah so yeah it's kind of nice i think that's great so dr ebony i want to thank you for coming on the podiatry legends podcast it's now all official and uh <laughs> I will have a t-shirt coming your way. Oh, the, thank you so the much. The Legends podcast t-shirt. They are pretty cool. Yes, they're collecting. <laughs> um, thank do, you. Do you have a final tip for anyone? Before we finish up, do you have a final tip to pass on to anybody? Or you're like, no, nope, adios. It's all good. I I don't have a, I have a tip. Just, you know, I super appreciate the show and how it's been received in the podiatry community. Yeah. Um, I hope Brad and I and Dr. Sarah can um, continue to represent the field well. And I'm like you, let's pray for 10 more seasons. <laughs> yeah, 10 more seasons would be fantastic. So once again, thank you for coming on the show. And I really loved you sharing your story and how this whole, how the story just unfolded. It was great. Thank you so much for having me. No, thank you. Thank you. Bye. See ya.